In this video, I wanna show you guys a very simple curl example. If you build anything that you're from that uses a an API from another website, you're probably familiar with curl. But if you're not, curl is very valuable for building applications that connect to other websites and or other systems. And so curl is uh, what we use a lot to connect with other APIs. So I want to show you guys a really simple example of curl and really how you can kind of build your own API from your website to your client's website or from client sites to client sites. And we do this sometimes to kind of, uh, if it's a product based website and we wanna know, you know, keep track of how many products because we've done it where the number of products they sell is how we get paid. So we use a curl command to pull that data from their website. So, I'm gonna show you guys a really simple example of curl and how you can use it to increase the value of your sites, all right? So I've created this page here on ideapro.io for curl.php and I've opened the browser here to ideapro.io slash curl.php, okay? So on the ideapro site, ideapro.com site, I've created a page called example-json.php and I've created an array with apple, orange, pear, and grape in here and then I've encoded it with JSON. If you haven't watched the JSON videos, I'll link it up here in the card. The J that's a great way to pass data between uh, sites is to JSON that data. And basically what it does, it turns it into a string instead of an array. So I've just printed this out to the screen here. So if we actually went to this page, you would see the echoed out JSON uh, value there on the page. Now that's not typically the best way to do it. The best way to do it would be to use like an API key or something like that to validate where that's coming from and who is requesting it so that you're just not pushing out data to a page on your website that anyone can access because it might be data that you don't want anyone to access, okay? But for in this example, we're just doing it really simple. Don't want to worry about API keys or anything like that. Just want to pass data to the page and get it from another site. So back to the ideapro.io site here. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up and we're going to do a curl init and we're gonna initialize the curl and then we're gonna close it. And then we're gonna put in some values in there to pull that data over from the other site, okay? First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a value and we're just gonna call it ch is the value. And we're gonna say curl init, and that is a function and that's going to end that line of code. And then, so we don't forget, we're gonna come down here and say curl close and we're going to do ch inside of there because we're going to close off this curl initialization. You don't want to leave that open because that's an open connection between them and it just causes memory issues and stuff like that on your server. Uh, typically not on their server, typically just on your server You don't if you don't close that out. The next thing that we're going to call is we're going to include the URL that we're going to be connecting to. And as I said, this is a very simple curl connection. Um, we're not going to worry about posting and post variables and all that stuff to that connection. You could put all of it into a get variable from within the uh, from within this next line. So we're going to say curl s e t o p t. That is a function, and see it gives us the different values here. And so this first one is c h. So we're going to say dollar sign c h. This next one is the option, the C-U-R-L-O-P-T underscore URL. And then here the value is the actual URL that we're gonna be connecting to. So we're gonna close that off here. And so we're gonna be connecting to HTTPS ideapro.com slash, and then that page that we're connecting to, which is example hyphen json.php, example json.php because I did put that page in the root of the website there. 
Okay, so now basically we've we've connected to that URL with the curl opt URL option, the curl option URL. So now we want to receive that server's response. So we're going to say C U R L S E T O P T. And again, that's that function again. And we're going to call the C H value there. Our curl option here is going to be curl opt underscore return transfer, transfer. There we go. And the option value is going to be true. So we want the uh, to get that response back from the other server. So then we need to create a variable called server response, or you could call it server output if you wanted to, but server response curl underscore exec and use that function there and inside of that we're going to put in our ch value there okay so basically that is uh initial initializing the curl uh connecting to the url that we specify here return transfer is true because we want that response from the server the server response is executing that curl command and of course, we're going to close that curl here. So then down here, we can print out to the browser the server response. All right, we're going to save that. We're going to come over here and we're going to refresh. And that's what we get. Apple, orange, pear, and grape. Now that is a JSON um, value here. We, we, uh, we encoded it with JSON here. And then we're going to come back over here and we're going to decode that. So we're going to say server response is equal to JSON decode. And we're going to put in server response, save that. We come over here and we refresh. And now we have an array of apple, orange, pear, and grape. So that is how we um, do a very simple curl command to a URL and get the response from that page. Now, that works on um, getting the full HTML also. So you could pull the full HTML of a page. So if you wanted to change this to put in, you know, google.com and you came back and, you know, we're gonna cause an error here, but you could pull all the HTML and put it inside of a, a page. So let's do ideapro.com. Ideapro.com and then server response. We're going to get rid of this part here and we're going to echo a text area. Let's do a text area. And we're going to say columns is equal to 40 and rows is equal to 40. Okay. And so then inside of this, we're going to put in the server response. Okay. We'll come back and refresh. So now this is a text area of the HTML from ideapro.com. So now we have everything, all the HTML from ideapro.com, and we could then parse out that data. So if you're wanting to pull um, something from another website and like all the links from another website, you could put in that URL and then parse out those links from, from using curl in there. So the one thing that you, um, instead of using curl, you could do file get contents. So server, let's say server response is equal to file get contents. And then we are going to put that here. And then we're gonna put in this URL here into the file name. So what happens on that is most servers have turned off file get contents. So if we come back over here and refresh the page, we still get it. And the reason why is because we're on the same server. Ideapro.io is on the same server as ideapro.com. So it understands and says, oh, 
we're going to go ahead and pull that. But if we were trying to do file get contents from an external site that wasn't on the same server, we'd get an error that says that uh, file get file get contents wrapper is disabled for external blah blah blah. So curl makes it a whole lot easier to use than file get contents. I like to use file get contents only local and of course if it's local then you can just include that file or whatever you need to do but using curl is great for apis and pulling data from other websites and this is a very simple example but i like to keep it simple and i can you do another video on it on expanding it to different variables where you can use a post variable so you can post queries to that server that you're connecting to. Of course, you can do that here too. So if we said, um, let's go to, let's go back over to this page here. And we said, um, get, let's do a get. So we'll turn this off. And let's say if is set dollar sign underscore get key, let's say key, let's do that, right? Key. So we wanted to target a certain key value here. We say if is set key echo array. dollar sign underscore get inside of here we're going to say key and then so now it's just going to return that key that we're looking for okay so now on our on our call here we can say ideapro.io what was that page that we did example json.php example dash json.php of course we're not pulling json this time we're just pushing that that key so we could say question mark key is equal to two. What is the key two in that array? So question mark key is equal to two. Now let's get rid of this and just echo out the server response. Server response, save, and we come back over and we refresh this page. And now we have pair here. We need to make a break a couple of breaks up here to get away from that get away from that line so now we say pair all right so um, then we change this to value of three refresh and it's grape we can change it to a value of one come back over and refresh and it's orange so that's a way that we could pass in variables just using the get method on the URL that we're calling here. Um, post method is adding some more curl options in there. And I can do another video that explains more of that if you guys need that. There's actually curl builders. So if you have um, something you need, you can find curl builders online that you can put in what you need and it will build you out the um, curl example. So. Hope you guys like this video, like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.